Welcome back, everyone. So just a, over a week ago, the Toronto Six made history as the first Canadian team in the Premier Hockey Federation to win the league's most coveted prize, the Isabel Cup. <laughs> It was a nail biter of a game with the six taking the win in OT. That's overtime. And guess what? We've got two of the players with us today to talk all about it. Welcome Toronto Six players, Daryl Watson, Soroya Tinker. Yeah. First of all, congratulations over this huge win against the Minnesota Whitecaps. And thank you for bringing, most importantly, <laughs> the cup in. This is gorgeous. Yeah. Now, Soroya, the caption for your game-winning post was, 24-hour champagne diet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we're starting with a hard-hitting question. Uh, how much of that champagne did you drink out of the cup? Just, just a little bit, but... Uh, yeah? Um, but yeah, we had an awesome time popping champagne when we got off the ice with the team. Very well-deserved, and uh, it was a relief. So we got to pop bottles. Daryl, <laughs> you too? Yeah, no, I drank quite a bit. <laughs> too much out of the cup. And after the game, we had a celebration room where we were spraying champagne, drinking beer, oh. you know, just hard. <laughs> Hockey girl things. Just yeah. hockey girl yeah. things. <laughs> Listen, we know that this is a huge moment, uh, not just for Canadian women's hockey, but also for young racialized girls. And Soroya, you are the executive director of the nonprofit Black Girl Hockey Club. Yes. And after your win, uh, a board member tweeted, so beyond happy for Soroya Tinker in the Toronto Six, earned it. Black girls will pick up hockey because of her. Wow. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I mean, it makes me feel amazing. Uh, makes me feel like a trailblazer. And I mean, with the Toronto Six, we see so many young black girls come into the arena and want to play and want to be a T6 player. Mm -hmm. um, and what I notice, a lot of the girls that are black individuals don't even get asked if they want to play hockey. Huh. Um, so when they come in and see us play and, and see myself as representation on the ice, they understand that they can do it and they can be professional hockey players. Amazing. As, as a mentor, what do you feel like you're able to offer these girls that maybe you didn't have mm. coming up? Yeah, I mean, I never really had somebody to look to. I never had a physical manifestation to look and, and see on the ice. Mm -hmm. So um, being a piece of representation, being a sister, a friend to these girls, um, I love getting to know them and, and seeing how they grow in the game. So um, they're they're amazing and they're the next generation yeah. of pro hockey players. So yeah. I'm excited to watch them grow. So exciting. <laughs> wow. History is being made over and over and over again with your team, with the league. Um, Daryl, you recently signed um, an historic contract with the Toronto Six and you made it public that your 2023-2024 salary was $150,000 US. Now that is a league record, right. so congrats. <laughs> Thank you. We talk about it on the show all the yeah. time, that money is still so taboo. So right. why did you decide to say, here's what I'm mm -hmm. making? <laughs> well, women's hockey's been struggling for a really long time, and this historic contract, which I'm so grateful to have, um, you know, I think it provides insight into the pro women's hockey environment, mm -hmm. and it will inspire young girls and they'll be able to see that, you know, professional women's hockey players are able to make a viable income. So, you know, I think it's just so great to be able to share it and provide hope for young girls. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, that just before you signed the contract, it was the Premier Hockey Federation's announcement to double the salary cap to $1.5 yes. million, dollars, that decision actually brought you out of retirement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah 23 when I was retired. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I graduated last spring, and I was planning on going to get a master's degree at University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is where I played hockey. And then, you know, seven days before classes started, I realized I didn't want to pursue commercial real estate. I was kind of <laughs> Figuring my life out as a 23-year-old, and then the salary was released that it would be 1.5 million US, and that's such a staggering number for women's sports. Yeah. So that brought me out of retirement, and I decided, you know, why wouldn't I try to pursue my love and passion for hockey and make some incredible money? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 To do. Right, right. right. That's incredible. So let's bring this back to the big win. Uh. <laughs> How do you think it's going to affect the future of women's hockey as a per profession? Let's talk 
start with you, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're, we're all able to make a living wage next year. So I think that's huge, especially in comparison to the men still not making millions, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we're able to only be professional hockey players and solely focus on training and, and being the best players we can be. Um, and I think that that's, that's the goal. Um, we want that as professional women's hockey players and we're excited to be able to have that next year and be able to give out salaries like Daryl's got. That's <laughs> huge, <Yeah. laughs> huge. Well, listen, Soroya and Daryl, uh, once again, just making history and just breaking that glass ceiling into a million pieces every <laughs> step of the way. Thank you both and congratulations, congratulations. to you. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.